University of California Santa Barbara oceanographer Ira Leifer is taking a close look at how coastal communities might have been affected. Leifer was chief mission scientist for NASA's airborne remote sensing during the spill. Prevailing winds could have carried those chemicals on shore. Leifer wanted to know what that might mean for public health. The scientific literature on toxicology and oil spills is thin, so he instead used well-known health data from chronic exposure to gasoline and plugged that data into his model. By that measure, my quick calculations suggested that for an adult healthy person, maybe in effect, maybe not, for a baby, levels were 1,000 to 10,000 times where one starts to see effects. For a baby, levels were 1,000 to 10,000 times where one starts to see effects. Hey, what's your name? And a family visiting from Arkansas played in a puddle with even more oil, 142 parts per million. The sixth sample was a spot in Orange Beach where again we found kids playing and we found our highest content of oil and petroleum, 221 parts per million. My son was at Orange Beach while they were spraying correction. Since then, he's been hospitalized three times. Massive kidney infections, had some kidney stones. Last week, he got admitted for breathing. A breathing treatment, he has lung infections now. To see a foreign company come in here and do this to the people that I live with, my family, is an outrage. I would say the kid was probably five years old with his parents on a public beach with a toy bucket and shovel that dug down, what do you figure, three, four inches? And just started having fun playing in this wet hole. Of course, his mother freaked out. I freaked out. Immediately grabbed some of these absorbent pads. We went and rubbed him down. But why in the hell didn't they tell people that? Why, why were we out there on the beach in all this PPE and they refused to close the damn beaches? Why did they wait so long to tell people they couldn't go in the water? We did some blood testing on some children and we found that, in fact, they had really high levels. They were members of fishing and crabbing families that were out on the water with their parents and they had high levels as well. Uh, when you talk to the medical doctors and their staff, they're seeing a lot of children with respiratory problems, with skin rashes, and continue to come into the office day after day after day. They treat them and then they get re-exposed and they have to come back again. We told the baby, which he's six years old, we told him to stay in the middle of the boat, don't go to the edge, don't go anywhere by it. You jump some waves and some water splashed on his face. Four hours later, it looked like he had been burnt with a large cigar held to his skin that was at least a quarter of an inch sticking up above his skin. We had went down to the beach and I told my 10 year old I didn't want him down there. He had rode his bike. I told him I didn't want him down there. I didn't feel that it was safe. I told him to come on home. So we proceed down the beach and all of a sudden we walk through, not that you've seen anything, but it's like we walk through a acid cloud. It smelled like muriatic acid and burnt power steering fluid and it took your breath. We get home, my 10 year old is sitting in the room screaming that his throat was on fire. Mm. That was Friday evening at around seven o'clock. Saturday morning, when my husband and, and Noah woke up, neither one of them could breathe. Saturday morning, the child's nose just starts gushing blood everywhere. He has never had a nosebleed in his 10 years of life. 
ever had in his sleep. My 11-year-old child has tested positive for the chemicals from the oil. Who's going to see him? My daughter came home about, I don't know, maybe last week. In the middle of last week sometime, she came through and said that one of the little girls in her class has staff. My child is eight, so this kid has to be either eight or nine. Now, we, why would a child just break out of staff out of nowhere? Um, another friend of mine took her daughter to Biloxi, and um, she has, like, these big gape wounds all over her feet. And on the inside of her elbows, like on the inside of the arm, looks like, I don't even know how to describe it. It looks so painful. I have seen small children with lesions all over their body. We are very, very ill. I've seen children with severe rashes, asthma attacks, nosebleeds, severe headaches, sick body aches. Who knows what these chemicals have done to all of these children's reproductive I, I'm already getting emails from uh, women who were in their first trimester when, and I got emails from them back in, back early on. The babies have now been born and there are health problems. And this is what the medical community has anticipated based on the knowledge of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and harm created in the first trimester. So there's going to be a whole, you know, cohort of of infants, unfortunately, um, a spill babies. Earlier this week, the water here was emerald green. Now, it's milky brown. It's not beautiful anymore. I, I thought to myself, as I saw the little kids in the water and, and the parents watched it, watching them be in the water, I thought, Lord, they don't know that that's not supposed to be brown. That it is safe to eat, it's safe to swim, it's safe to play, it's safe for your kids to get sand in their mouth. you gotta do.